Hello, everybody. Welcome to the round of 16 match between Mad Jake and his Pro Owls and Thomas T and his Dark Owls. In the booth with me is the man, the myth, the legend, Purple Chest. Hello. Good evening, good evening, Jimmy. What a fantastic looking game we are staring at right now. Thomas T, well known, of course, for his Dark Elf play, one of the finest uh, proponents of Dark Elves seen in the CCL Champions Cup. A uh, regular there with Dark Elves. Really knows his Dark Elves. So, um, excited to see him with the Pro Elves this evening. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Magic is pretty much always... They're both, they're both always here, aren't they, with Dark Elves and Pro Elves. Yep. So it's, it's pretty cool. Move 10, catcher there. Um, we've we've got another juggernaut again. The uh, the Dakar, the Dakar specialty seems to be people taking the juggernaut. Not very very sexy in uh, twenty two. Mm. And and pairing them with an L drill, I you know I hear that's nice or a jaw Yeah. Or even some Michael Coors. <laughs> and Thomas T is a wizard and an apple and a babe and L drill, so he's down a lot of TV. Um, his team is basically almost a starting team, actually. You know, looking at it, he's, just, he's yeah. got hardly any skills. Um, so I think the quality of uh, Mad Jake's team will probably prevail in this matchup. Well, Thomas likes to build big, nasty Dark Elf teams and keep slamming them into things. And sometimes they die just before they're qualifying, which I think is what happened here. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's also very used to a really aggressive Elf style. And that's why I'm interested to see him facing Pro Elves, who themselves are no slouch in they're getting up in your face and really trying to pressure you instantly which is it look exactly as i say that thomas t goes straight in full contact let's Oof. get some other dub <laughs> and falls flat on his ass <laughs> yeah double skulls falling flat on his ass and putting one of his best pieces at risk classic mm. thomas t there <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah the doorway in on that one is incredible yeah oh man <laughs> I might copy that and have that. <laughs> anyway, right, back to the match. Confused chaos coaches out there in the audience. Yes, this is what it looks like when a team stands there and wants to get hit. Thomas T is basically just chunked with normal armor dice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, instant, instant death for Eldrill, absolutely standard, you use him once and then he gets instantly removed, like, every time. Um, Oliver, I think that's pretty fair, actually. He, yeah, he is similarly <laughs> aggressive in his style with his Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good take. <laughs> it really is. Great hot take, yep. Jumping with normal dice. It's gonna be amazing, guys! <laughs> Yeah, Mad Jake I know less well, except as you say, he is another elf specialist. This um, should be a feast of elfing. Yeah. I mean, that's real bad as well for Thomas T, isn't it? Because, like, that's, you know, that's his best player has just been Kaz, isn't it? Like, the rest of his team is yeah. pretty shit, so yeah. it's looking bad for him. Well, except he has got, you know, an enormous amount of experience. Um, with a, a wizard, it's, I think, why we saw the ball run away. Mm. You know, he's not going to stop getting up in your face with his elves, so uh, the pros are going to stay under pressure here. Yep. Now, they can score at will, but... <laughs> they won't want to. Well, they might, I guess. Like, it opens you up to losing 2-1, but you shouldn't get 2-1 yeah. grinded by this team, should you? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, should, no, matter right. how, no matter how well Thomas T plays this match, you, you look at these two teams and you think, God, I should definitely win. So I actually wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind banging in early just to avoid the whiz, because that's one of the ways you can lose, right, is, the, is a whiz play. Absolutely, it's a lose condition. I mean, the Dark, dark Elves do already have a blitzer sort of in range. You know, quick little bolt, they can go 1-0 here, mm -hmm. and then you're always chasing it. So I think we might see, yeah, the ball come forwards and, and possibly even a score or a deep field stall. No, he's going to go with the halfway line. <laughs> we, can, we can fold him from every direction here if he doesn't get the shape just right. Is he going for a big well, old foul? I, I, he is. Yeah, I, 
I, I don't hate the shape I'm seeing so far. Although oh, always God. on the front edge of that could be awful, couldn't it? Yeah, he's got the he's got the dodge out though, hasn't he? Now to after, after not getting sent off, he can. Uh, yeah, he can like reduce here. that to a four man. No, he doesn't stand up. Okay, fireball comes in. I, 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 yeah, I'd have to. I couldn't not. Oof. Four men, including the ball carrier and his, you know, two of his best pieces. Gets three. Okay, that's pretty good value. That ball is attackable. Feels like he's played a bit too passive this turn. Fun, funnily enough, after saying how aggressive he is, I feel like you know this safe move of standing up, and then these this safe move of just standing up. Like maybe he should have tried to, you know, make a play for the ball after he pops it. Yeah, I think perhaps he's assessing this as a less good attempt than I thought it was. Yeah. Oh, he's going to bounce it first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he'd be bouncing it. Yeah. Oh god, then he it is, it's, it's the lack of a really good elf that he could trust to come get it, isn't it? That's the thing, yeah. yeah. Like just this one, like this was a two plus, right? Isn't yeah. the, the, oh this tackle and diamond tackle on him it was not a two plus, so this was a straight four plus. But still I would have still uh, liked okay. to have done that at the end, right? Like just do that at the end if after everything else. Rather than just standing up and is is he doing anything just standing up? Not really. I think he's got to realise just how far behind he is. Yes, and, and heads up his risk profile a little higher. Yeah. Yeah. A lot higher. <laughs> I think. I think a lot higher. I think this is... Well, that's why I didn't hate that move when he came through right at the start. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, it, it's finding those three plus moves that you perhaps wouldn't yeah. date normally, but in this game you absolutely should. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this is. I, I would say this is pretty desperate. Especially yes. after losing Eldril. And hence doing what you can while you still have elves. It's probably the right answer, isn't it? So keep coming. Which he is, and is Thomas's way anyway. Yeah. So is rolling ones, to be fair. He really is just chugging with normal some dice. very poor dice. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a great, that's a great analysis. <laughs> chugging with but normal dice. It's entirely dice. Ollie's fault now. You doomed him to that fate. <laughs> oh, dude. Brutal. But I mean, I, I kind of mean it. Every time I face Thomas T, I thought, well, he's definitely going to come for me then. Yeah. And, and he does. It's yeah. it's reliable. But even there, rather than pull that witch back, he'll take that frenzy on, despite the fact that that's taken two elves sort of out of a, what could have been a much better defensive shape. Not another one. <laughs> okay, it was a three plus, but it was still another one. <laughs> I said it's a different type of pressure, isn't it? Because he's kept half the elves in the back. Really hard to see a way forwards now. It is turn five though, so he just yeah, he just takes the extra hit. Or jugs. Takes the push. Wow. And now obviously the whiz the whiz gone means you can get the ball back yeah. on the move ten and uh, it's not gonna be yet. He won it on the move ten, just so he can go wherever the hell he wants. Yeah, I felt that was the turn to do it whilst you're rejiggling, but he didn't. Hmm. I wouldn't mind a two plus three there as well to get somebody behind, behind enemy lines. I guess there's no rushes there. Well, I mean, you say that Thomas is again very, very adept at having been up in your face. Suddenly pulling all of them back and then a wall of, a curtain, if you like, of Dark Elves appears in front of you. Mm. Piercing the curtain can be fearsomely tough. Mm. <laughs> I was just trying to work out what that meant. <laughs> I mean, he's got six Dark Elves, which he can control, you know, Two thirds of the pitch with, and there are six that are all a, a single two plus or just a movement away from being, you know, oh. right back in front of the furthest advanced pro L. Don't scores. <laughs> the, apparently, the way to, to beat Thomas T is just let him roll dice. <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait for the bucket of ones and skulls, and then move forward without rolling anything. <laughs> I mean, 
Just end turn, let him roll some dice. They'll they'll fail, and you'll be in a better position. Yeah. <gasps> yeah, I'll try that. If I ever play him and he gets me in trouble, I'll just end the turn. <laughs> Over to you, mate. <laughs> well, some dice sort me out. Thanks. <laughs> Again, still no handoff. No. Oh. Fatal error rolling dice of his own here. <laughs> yep. Imagine rolling dice in a dice game. And it does sort of seem that when they hit each other, no good really comes of it. <laughs> It's weird. It? On, only Eldra. Eldra was the only successful hit. Everything else has just been messing around, rolling ones and skulls. <laughs> well, here we go. Surely something's happening with this. You'd have thought so, but it, we may have been deceived, Jim. Hmm. Less is happening than I had assumed was going to. Yeah, just because I expect a different positioning if you weren't. Yeah. I was hitting the back, he's just hitting the back corner. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's a thing that he did. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> um, I, look, I suppose with the pin on the front pieces, the elves are squeezed here. I mean, if you or I might just think there's a... Lovely easy route out to the left, but mm. or just smash the dark elves. That works too, doesn't it? Mm. Bang everyone out. GG. Nice little sidestep there. Yeah, that I wouldn't have hit that one. That, but, um, I don't like that. Yeah, that was the problem, wasn't it? It gave him that. It gave him that sidestep. But then, yeah, look, it's just all going to be fine. Isn't it? Probably. Again, I did that. I mean, nice hit, but sort of why? <laughs> just roll some two pluses and everything's Yeah, fine. it's five or elves. You only did one GFI there, funnily enough. I, I would think the second one to, to get this... Sidestepper completely covered would have been worth it. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I guess he's making a screen there, isn't he, for, for the witch? Yeah. If he failed, the witch would be able to get through as well. But I quite like just taking out. That guy. I, I mean, I, I like the shape we got to in the end. I, I didn't feel we had the safest of routes through the turn there, but mm -hmm. it was very likely to all be all right. That's the thing, isn't it? A lot of the criticisms that, that are made are just marginal. And... Yeah, you're talking about, you know, is it a 97% safe turn or a 95% safe turn? Well, yeah. you know, that 2% was there to be grabbed, but it's not hugely important. And if it's 2%, where's Artemis will say, this is terrible! <laughs> As we've seen, really all you just need to do is just pick something with your elves, it'll be fine, and then wait for Thomas T, because he'll just destroy himself by yep. rolling a dice. Yep. Just roll an instant one. Oh, 3D, good. L nice to see a 3D. A lot, not not as many as you would expect are made, but this is well done, a 3D. And he's got Juggernaut, so the wrestle was not a factor. And again, he doesn't score on the move 10. This is two games where he hasn't scored on the move 10. And uh, I've got Is it to near that. anything useful? Well, sprint. But is it near? I mean, does it need just well, he's a couple on 39. of touches? He, he could have been on 45. Yeah. <laughs> like, he could have been on 45 right now. and it's, That seems crazy to me, that he didn't get sprint before. You know, exactly as Team Intel says. Like, seems crazy we've not got him hit before. And okay, the rest of your team might die, but... The rest that of the seems like a like... big upgrade to, sp to sprint him up, yes. Yeah, it's huge. It was my biggest regret when I... Uh, the first time I qualified high L's was not getting the, uh, not getting the sprint on him. It was... I should have done it. Yes, like the, the full I had a good now. team.
To be, to be fair, my team was better than Mad Jake's team here, so I had more to lose in playing on. But it's just it's just too powerful, Heaven Sprint. It's just, I, you know, I would never make that mistake again. I would always play on to get it down. It's, yes, a true natty is ridiculously good. Yeah. I mean, even a one-step natty is incredibly good, but a true natty just takes that up such a, a massive step. Mm -hmm. And hence in the new rule set, you know, when people say they've killed one turn, as that's all they've killed is the absolute natty. Yep. Now you have to get at least one move. Um, and it's that's a big change mm. for leagues. You know, true natties are of the devil. Yep. But funnily enough, actually scoring any with anything except the natty is easier now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Two turns. Yeah. Juggernaut being more appealing and uh, yeah. obviously multiple, multiple rerolls. Re that's the biggest thing. Yeah. So yes, getting a one-turn touchdown done is probably slightly easier. Um, and it's more reliable to build the skills that you want onto things. Mm. So by the end of a season, you can pretty much, if you set out to build a, a one-turn, then you can do it. Mm. Yeah, like... But I think people will pay that cost to see the true natty's gone. Yes. Yeah, I like think that's the thing, isn't it? People think, you know, people think players like, you know, pro elf catchers and high elf catchers and things like that are just guaranteed to get a movement if they want it. You know, which is... Yeah, if they want it, they can. Yeah. You're guaranteed to get a double for Juggernaut and stuff, so. I mean, you have to save to get it, you have to score on the right pieces, but that's not very difficult if you're elves. Yeah, eventually. Eventually, you're guaranteed to get it if your player survives and you play infinite games. <laughs> You will eventually get the things you need if you want. Well, I mean, even in a you know eight-game season, to say put four or five touchdowns on an elf catcher seems very doable, doesn't it? Yep. Right. So, yeah. This unfortunately looked at the I looked at the team names. Uh, like the coach, well, I knew the coach, I knew the coaches, and I thought, oh, what's the team names? They, they always they usually have the same team names, Thomas T and Mad Jake. Um, so I thought this could have been a good match, but yeah, unfortunately, Thomas T's team is just. Well, so it's a big question team. what does he do here? Does he try and get a quick one in and then hope for some sort of kickoff result? Does he try and get some form of attrition, try and lean into the slightly higher armour? But I mean, you've got to say, there's so much blodge and the mighty blow on the other team, and it just. I, I don't see that working very well. And he's got the move ten, hasn't he? So like, even if you score, yeah. he might just beat you two. Even if you even if you turn eight stall, he might just one turn anyway. So, yeah. I guess you've got three side steppers, no? Two side. So I'm not sure there's a good answer. Um, I mean, come forward in good order. Try and take some elves out as you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't see. It. I certainly don't see a key advantage in trying to do it in two or three. But really, you're looking for something to turn this game around. You probably what you're probably going to have to do is Thomas T here is just score whenever you get the chance because yeah. <laughs> you're not going to. You're just not in control, are you? You can't. You can't score. No, it's un you're anymore. unlikely to be. Yes. Yeah. Unless you, unless you do a bit of an absolute dicing. Haha, <laughs> hello Tom Schnitz. Oi, oi, oi. Yippee, yippee, yippee. It is PC in the booth. Glorious. I am indeed. And thrilled to be here. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is a funny one, isn't it? The... I... It's almost sad, isn't it? The skill disparity, like it, in the players, it's like it's basically not. It's almost a starting team, isn't it? It's like it's crazy how much TV's done. Yeah, it really is. It's and it's very difficult to see how this gets turned around. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm struggling to even come up with a plan, and I like to think there's always something you can think I'm trying to do this. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose it is to try and just take some elves out, try and get the numbers up, but. It, it's very hard to see how you're going to do that because you've got to be in control of the field to get enough hits in yeah. and still keep a ball safe. 
And I just don't see how you get control of this field against a team this slippery and this dangerous. Mm -hmm. no, it's just got better skills than you. Yep, yep, you just gotta hang in, haven't you? All you can do is just hang in and hope. Hope for some dice, right? Like he double ones and his best player dies off a double one, Apo fails. And, you know, then you one dice, power somebody and kill them, things like that. That's all you can really hope for. And it, I mean, it's, it's a lovely. I mean, Mad Jay's coming through a beautiful order here, look. So he's, he's found a hole which was there all along. Slipped us enough elves through. He's doubled up on the main route from where the ball is to where the main elves are. So you can't blitz a, a single, simple hole through there. Even if you take out one of them, you can get a ball up through, but there isn't the width quite to stall it into a nice cage. It's just, it's it's a beautiful attack. Dark Elves already in trouble on their second turn. Yeah. Now, okay, he's, he's made this little cage, but it's yeah. going to be a sail from all sides instantly. <laughs> I would have, have put this guy, personally, rather than that one, but never mind. I don't think it Yes, I, I would have done and, and come up upwards into it rather than around the side into it. Mm. But the same plan in the end, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, it's just funny, isn't it? Like, just not yeah. being my... I suppose this route, there's a tiny bit more room, but... As you said, we are now in the Alamo. <laughs> yeah. Always interested to be the Alamo. I feel it is a fitting... Um, uh, what's the, the phrase? Simile here? Metaphor here? Uh, I'm actually named for Davy Crockett, who my mother mm. used to watch her black and white TV show of Davy Crockett. Uh, and then, I think years later, fell broken with me and used to sing the Davy Crockett theme tune to me. So my first name is David, named for that. So I always wanted to see the Alamo. When we were in Texas, we went to see it. Um, obviously, Jim Bowie died there, as well as David Bowie. David Bowie. Um, <laughs> uh, so Jim Bowie, as well as, of course, Davy Crockett. Um, and uh, about 150 of them. Including a couple of guys that didn't have surnames, so obviously Freed Slade. And uh, it's not very impressive. It's a sort of two foot high wall around a churchyard and a farmyard. You just think, well, of course they all died. <laughs> and then it turns out that their general, uh, Houston, uh, for whom the city is named, had ordered them to leave it because it wasn't of any strategic importance and because there were 5,000 Mexicans. And 150 Texans went, no, we're going to defend these two foot walls. <laughs> against 5,000 rifle and cannon armed Mexicans mm. so I think the big takeaway from the Alamo was how incredibly stupid they all were <laughs> I mean to oh. be fair they had they had a presenter of a darts show and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and a singer so I mean you couldn't expect them to <laughs> Bowie invented the, bow, the Bowie knife which is a big old weapon isn't it yeah and Davy Crockett was quite an interesting character, as well as a frontiersman. Um, actually, represented. He was in the Senate. He was a senator a couple of times as well. Mm. And then died defending a two-foot-high wall against way too many Mexicans, when specifically ordered not to. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's just getting worse and worse, isn't it? It's just, yeah. it's just horrible. So it's got their two-foot-high the wall but... is crumbling. <laughs> They've pulled the channel cannon into the church and they're sitting around discussing whether they'll be remembered for ridiculous songs or for very high knives. <laughs> I think the crocodile dundee knife that he pulled out, I think that was a bowie knife. A bowie knife. Mm. Bowie Bowie? I always think bowie. it was David Bowie, but Jim Bowie, wasn't it? Jim Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was the dance man. Yeah, that was my that was my joke. <laughs> Jim Bone and David. We're in this game for two in a black. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this is just It's quite nice that he's got that guy up there. Is he gonna try and give him a ball? Special prize! <laughs> he is a winnable try... game against Proel! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. So he he does he does try and find, you know, what he's got here. He did kill him a bar when he was only three. Mm. Oh, I think I preferred handing it off. Oh, he already did the handoff, didn't he? Shit. I think he was going to hand off and then he realised he'd already handed it off and that's why he had to do the GFIs. I think that's literally what he did, don't you? Yep. 
because otherwise he would have gone in the corner and, that, and, so, and so yeah he literally just went there and was like oh I can't end off again <laughs> fair enough well I mean it's a classic example of the only way to get it done is survive the brawling and then make a break for it as soon as you see an opportunity yeah I mean so that's all let's he see had, if it works yeah, yeah it's all he had it. I completely respect it It's funny because the previous matchup was uh, was Halflings versus Thomas T's Dark Elves, where the Halflings seem to have no chance, and now it's Thomas T that seems to have absolutely no chance. Oh, double one though! The double one. Now the Dubs. Now this doom. This oh shit. Well, I think we go one one here. The question is, can we stall up and defend a few turns? I I mean I think we can. There's yeah, there's space up this left side. Bring a couple of Dark Elves up that way and switch the ball across, maybe. I'd set my alarm for midnight because I needed a nap. I needed a nap. I was, I was shattered at nine. Like, I was absolutely shattered. Um, but then, randomly, at half ten, I was all right. So, got up and did did some commentary of games. Glorious. And now he's going to get to do the handoff and get the ball on the blodger. And... Uh, yeah, that was a nice little turn of stall, wasn't it? That double one is just what he needed. In passing, you do know that, you know, I'll set an alarm for midnight. It, that's not... It's not great, Jim. No, I, I get that. Someone that doesn't sleep brilliantly myself. Let's just... The casual way you just drop in. Yeah, I'll sleep for a few hours and then get up when it's light and then maybe I'll, I don't know, hit myself in the head until I fall asleep and then I'll... <laughs> sleep for two hours and get up and talk to people for seven hours over the internet <laughs> like that's just what normal people do you know it you do know it isn't <laughs> yeah i know that yeah okay all right good, good. Just a i'm little... a genetic freak and i'm not normal i mean i'm not saying normal's a good place to be i'm just saying you're not there <laughs> yeah thanks i'm aware of that <laughs> good self-knowledge is a good thing hmm. I'll hopefully conquer my Minecraft addiction soon. No, you won't. I hopefully will. It's been like a few weeks, like now. Well, that, I mean, you probably will, but you'll just replace it with the addiction to something else. That's how you conquer addictions, Jim. I don't know. I think I should be all right, Jim. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> definitely, definitely isn't a cycle of game addictions that one could point to for the last, say, five years. Oh, um, yeah. I don't think so, no. Almost certainly going to be different this time. I don't think there's been a cycle of game addictions. There was, there's been Battle Brothers a little bit, but that's about the only one I would say. Story of Brawl. Oh yeah, okay. And Blood Bowl. Yeah, I mean Blood Bowl is more of a, of a life thing than a, than a video game, isn't it? I like I've been, I've been in a Blood Bowl since 1990, for God's sake. Are you, are you now in Blood Bowl recovery? Is it a? Is it a lifestyle that one can exit? That's the key question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, who knows? Are you a Blood Bowl survivor? <laughs> I don't mean I can never stop the Bowl. I think I can never stop the Bowl as long as I do. Yeah. Funny enough. So I, I quite like this shape. Again, I feel we're putting a little more too much on the line before the... Yeah, there we are. Before the shape is truly safe. But it's it's... It's nice. Yeah, I thought it was good. I mean, haven't it, seen enough pressure backwards from the pro elves, have we? No, yeah, we no. I think maybe he went he went for the throat too much, like he didn't need to, did he? Maybe he did over over commit a little bit. Uh, Mad Jake, like he knows his team's much better. He just wanted to get two 0 up and, and get it over with. Maybe he should have been a little bit more cautious and didn't, maybe he's not pressured so hard. Um, but I guess he should. Win. And, and he, to be fair, they, like this is the way Thomas T can win, right? He might be able to win in overtime here. If yeah, he can get a late enough, a late enough score that he's only got to defend against the move turn and stop that one to one push option, um, yeah, get the ball in overtime. No reason he can't push past the pro. Yeah, so maybe, maybe that was a, mis a fundamental error by Mad Jake was just over, over pressuring. Like, okay, it did make it horrible for Thomas T. He did roll a double one. Uh, yeah, it does tend installed. to be the way the pros get it done. I mean, they they came, they swamped him. And it tends to be either they take your ball and run away and laugh at you and you're 5-0 down, <laughs> or you somehow find a way through that leave most of them behind. And because they're not that quick, can somehow get away from them. Um, and that looks to be what's happened this time. Wow. So we will reset. I think we'll stall this out until 16, unless I'm very much mistaken. Yes, it's sure. And we'll uh, we'll see about the one turn. And if not, we'll, we'll face an interesting overtime. Yeah. Yeah, really. 
Really nice from Thomas T to get this to. Absolutely, and Mad Jake is going to have to do a mental reset. And say, okay, I, I perhaps just can't do that again. I can't just throw everything at them and expect it's definitely going to work. Yep. Glorious butthole foul. <laughs> Yeah, as someone that came a little late over here and you were all already saying that, from an outsider's perspective, I mean, they are wearing trousers and things. Like, <laughs> you know you are mentally seeing a butthole that isn't 100% there. That's kind of it's, what I'm saying. It's definitely there. They, they programmed it in. They programmed in that hole on the old depression in the in the pants on purpose. They, they knew what they were doing. <laughs> if I look a lot closer, I will be able to discern a, a genuine butthole in that move, will I? Yes, 100%. Well, why would I do that? Because Artemis said, butthole foul! <laughs> I see. Okay. And then you were like, oh my god, he's right. <laughs> That's how it worked for me anyway. <laughs> I'm still not entirely answered of my original question as to why someone was checking so hard to see if there were buttholes programmed in. Well, I, I'm just going to let that slide. I mean, it's that our sheep, right? So it is. Yeah, not a lot of choice. <laughs> long, long evenings. Um, Could have made it three. So nights. yeah, look, it's worked, and now we've got we've got a nice little hit to see if we can get elves up. Yeah. Lovely. Top work. Well. Nicely done there, uh, Thomas T. Yep, great stuff. And I mean, that's where I think Thomas T's skills really, really lie. I I've seen better Dark Elf players, I'll be honest. But Thomas T is a fantastic brawler. He's one of those players that you might have your foot in his neck, but if you take it off half an inch, he'll be straight back up and out coming at you with whatever he's got. Mm. He's, he's very aggressive, very good in the tight, in the rucks, endlessly creative and aggressive. Uh, and he just, he's not a quitter. And I, I absolutely respect that game style. Um, despite sometimes it be feeling, you know, ideal, he's going to come for me, at least I'm going to have agency in this game. Yes, yeah, that's usually he's, how he's, I feel. He's very experienced with doing that. But yeah, I mean, I can't deny I quite enjoy having a draw against him. I think I've, I've got a good shot. Yeah, those those kind of players, um, you know, him, Chunter and Arian, you think, well, you know, they, they're kind of predictable. They are going to, they are going to, Face you at, at some point, yeah. and they, you know all you've got to do is not fuck up on that on those critical turns, and Absolutely. you'll probably bang them out and be all right. But um, sometimes you do fuck up on them on those turns, don't you? Like you know, a lot of the times, like the the your your margins are like really thin sometimes, aren't they? On how you've got to play it, and you you can you can make a bit of a mistake, and all of a sudden you're in a lot of trouble. Um, and obviously, you can also not actually bang them out. Oh my God, quick snap! Well, <laughs> that made things a lot easier. Yeah, massively does. Um, still quite an evil kick, place. But... Yeah, you can't always find the dice. But usually, you don't need that many dice. Like, normally it's pretty easy. You've just got to find the players, haven't you? This is now, um, yeah. Well, there's a 2+, plus and then another 2+, plus involved. And I think I can see where there might be a few more 2+, pluses. But <laughs> yeah, it's pretty this easy. does look easy. like a pro-elf win. Yeah, a quick snap is brutal. Well, and just the lack of anything. I mean, you know, put a sidestepper there and it's instantly a stronger defense. It's just, there's nothing here, is there? No. That's the problem. I, I mean, mean he, I had to put the he had to put the sidestep on the other west, though, didn't he? That was had to. I, I can criticize where he's put the rest of the Dark Elves, but why bother? It's, yeah. yeah. yeah it, the team was not good enough. Glorious. Yeah. He no, did what he could with it, and I thought win. he did very, very well Until in that second half. Victorious. But and I will yeah, defend. no answer there. I will defend. Yeah. yeah, he did. He did well. F O O O O W W W W W. I mean, that's like if you watch a middleweight against a heavyweight, and they last four rounds. You're thinking, great, they're dodging and they're weaving and they've done well, and then the fifth round, the heavyweight just smacks them in the face and kills them. It's not. It's not going to take away the good work they did in the first four rounds. It just. Was likely to happen at some point. Oh, no. 
Yeah. Oh, look at it. If he'd actually bothered scoring his catcher, he'd have had a sprint by now. I wonder if that will end up being critical. Um, thank you very much, Goliath, for staying fantastic for 37 months. Absolutely glorious. Fua! And, uh, yep, congratulations to Magic. Commiserations to Thomas T. And thank you very much, PC. As always, absolutely glorious. Leisure, Jim. <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.